Hello and welcome back everybody to another episode in this FS Academy Commander series. Today we are on mission number three and we're still in our trusty Cessna 152. We're going to be doing some night flying and it looks like uh, things are going to get dark on us. So let's jump in. Traffic Golf Foxtrot Sierra Alpha Charlie 2500 feet passing overhead northbound Carnarvon traffic. It's a still and clear night over North Wales as we track the coastline northbound on our way towards our destination, Liverpool Airport. Passing Carnarvon Airfield down to our left with the town of Carnarvon coming up with its distinctive and lit castle on the hilltop. Further into the distance on our left side is Anglesey, where we can see RAF Valley, a fast jet training base for the Royal Air Force, and Mona, another lit and controlled aerodrome. To our right, the high mountain peaks of Snowdonia. Get familiar with your surroundings and fly us towards Clandidno, maintaining 2,500 feet. Flying up the visual flight rules for FR at night, we have fewer options available to us than during the day. Much of this is a consequence of reduced visibility, opening hours and runway lighting. Our options become even more restrictive if we were to experience a failure of our electrical system. On the far right side of the cockpit is the ammeter. This needle displays the charge or discharge status of the aircraft battery, which runs the aircraft electrical system. Dependent on this system are the interior and exterior lights, the flaps, communication and navigation radios, and some instrumentation. If the needle is to the left of center, the battery is discharging. If to the right, as it is now, then the battery is being recharged. This charging is provided by the alternator. Please switch off the alternator switch and see what effect this has. Be careful not to turn off the master switch located beside it. See how the ammeter is now displaying a discharge. This is coupled with a voltage warning light yep. below. As we have detected a system failure, the alternator in this case, we should not get pulled in and distracted without first ensuring our aviate step is fulfilled. We have not had any controllability issues or interruptions to engine power, so we don't need to take any immediate action. Next, we navigate. We are tracking the coastline and do not have any immediate need to change our direction such as to avoid terrain or controlled airspace. We follow this with communicate. This step has us consider if ATC need to be notified of an emergency situation or if passengers and crew are to be briefed. In this scenario, we are outside of controlled airspace and have no crew members or passengers to consider. As you can see, not all failures cause us to jump into action, as many scenarios involved more considered decision making, which is what we are going to focus on in this lesson. Without the alternator, the battery is now running the entire electrical system, but is not being recharged. This would eventually cause the battery to go flat. Battery life varies by aircraft type, but is typically no more than 15 to 30 minutes. We can maximize our battery's endurance by reducing the load on the electrical system by turning off non-essential consumers. Lighting and electrical heating consume a lot of power, so we can shed some of this load in order to conserve our battery. Let's start to reduce our lighting. 
Please turn off the taxi light. Okay, taxi lights going off. And now the landing light. Okay. See how the ammeter needle shows less of a discharge now that we have reduced the electrical load. We are now less visible to other traffic, but still retain our nav lights, which are the green, red, and white lights that indicate our orientation to onlookers. This is also supplemented by the red flashing beacon and white strobes, further assisting our nighttime illumination. So much for the exterior lighting, what about interior? Please turn off the dome light. That helps some more. We can still see the instruments thanks to the glare shield lighting, but have reduced our power consumption even further. We are not currently in icing conditions, so we can turn off the pitot heat. Please turn it off now. If we were flying under instrument flight rules, IFR, then you can imagine how an electrical failure would be even more severe, as we would be unable to navigate once the battery is depleted. Now that the immediate needs of AV8 Navigate Communicate have been met, and we have minimized our electrical consumption, we are faced with a decision. We need to consider our options and decide what we need to do to fly in the safest and most responsible way. Once again, a structured approach helps us to stay organized. One such structure is DODAR. DODAR stands for Diagnose, Options, Decide, Assign, and Review. This first step, Diagnose, is there to ensure that we correctly identify what has happened and what that means for us. With the amateur needle showing a discharge and the red voltage light illuminated, we can be quite sure that we have a power generation problem. We can stretch out our battery life a little longer in this configuration, but we can't be sure of how much time remains before our systems start to fail. The flaps are electrically driven, so we would have to land flapless, increasing the length of runway we need. The lack of lighting would make the landing more difficult, as we would not have any of the runway surface illuminated, making it harder to judge our distance from it. So, we have a series of issues that need to be considered when looking at our options. Our options generally consist of whether we can continue our flight or not, and if not, where should we divert to? Our routing is taking us across North Wales towards Liverpool, which is a controlled and busy airport, including airliner traffic. This may not be the best choice, as we would likely run out of battery by then, leaving us unable to communicate with ATC or be seen by other aircraft. Recently passed overhead Carnarvon airfield, which is uncontrolled, but has lit runways. Many uncontrolled airfields are closed at night, have only short grass runways and rarely have runway lighting, so Carnarvon is a viable option. The weather conditions are clear and still, so strong crosswinds, rain or poor visibility would not make Carnarvon unavailable. Aurea Valley and Mona airfields are a little further away and are controlled, but they too have lit runways. The next step of Dodar is to decide upon the safest course of action. Turning back towards Carnarvon seems like the best choice, as it has everything that we need in the event of a power failure, and it is nearby. Let's put Agreed. this into action. Turn us around and head towards Carnarvon Castle, located within the town. Whilst we still have power, we will announce our intentions on Carnarvon traffic so that any other nearby aircraft are aware of our issue. In Arvin traffic, Golf, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, Cessna 152, alternator failure, flying on battery power only, joining Carnarvon from Bangor to land, Carnarvon traffic.
plan our arrival on the assumption that the battery will be depleted before we land. This way we will be best prepared in case our battery has less life than we had hoped. If the battery does go flat before landing, we'll be unable to see the instruments. We will have to rely on pitch and power settings using the engine sound to help us set a desired RPM. Something else to consider is that we expect to lose control of the flaps, as they too are electrically powered. Our fuel consumption increases dramatically with flaps extended, so should Carnarfon become unavailable, we may get trapped with flaps that we can't retract, causing us to be unable to reach another airfield. The runway at Carnarfon has a length of almost 1,000 meters, so we don't need flaps to land. We will keep them retracted to keep our options open. Take us to Carnarfon Castle and then we'll continue onwards to the airfield. Descend to the circuit altitude of 1,000 feet. All right, descending. Under normal operations, we would plan an overhead join at Carnarvon, as this is the correct circuit joining procedure for this airfield. However, the radio is quiet and we are against the clock until our battery dies. We will announce our intentions to land straight in to runway 25. Carnarvon traffic, Golf, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie with alternator failure, joining for straight in approach runway 25, Carnarvon traffic. Alright, I can't make out the runway yet. Without the drag of the flaps, it will be hard to descend and decelerate at the same time. Bring the speed back now to 65 knots. To review our plan, we are low on battery and heading towards a suitable airfield. We see no reason to change our plan. Bring us into land on runway 25. All right, will do. Keep us at 65 knots on the approach. go. All right, we made it. We made it. Electrical failure is a serious issue, as we shall now see. Turn off the battery master switch. As you can see, it would be very difficult to manage flying safely like this. It's a good thing we landed when we did. We decided to forego the full circuit joining procedures, given the time critical nature of our problem and quiet airfield environment. It is this way of thinking and dealing with an issue that the commander must adopt. We will build on the DODAR framework as we progress. Well done. Cool, got a B. I'll take it. Probably because he had to tell me about my speed. All right, well, another good one. This one wasn't as um, stress inducing as the other two, but it was still fun. I enjoyed it. Well, thanks for following along. I'll catch you on the next one.